There are moments in this movie that when I read the script, I was like sharp intake of breath stuff. Was, <gasps> what? There is fantastic jump scares, fantastic acting. We get actors to do proper scenes. It would do it a disservice to call this a horror movie. It is way beyond that. It's beautiful looking. Tom, our cinematographer, is incredibly talented, been in the game forever, Oscar nominated, the whole deal. There's a lot of big hitters involved in this. Mr. Steven Spielberg's company is making this movie. Big hitters. So we have to deliver the goods. And they're wonderful, wonderful director and, and, and producer and Seth Brad and everybody involved in this has, has gone the extra mile. It's nearly killed us on a number of occasions on this. They haven't spared anything trying to kill us on board during storms and stuff. I don't know how, I really should call my agent. Um, or at least my psychiatrist. It's been a, a huge, if, if one third of the adventure that we've had making it ends up on the screen, we, we will have a fine movie on our hands. As we've seen, there have been hundreds of iterations of bringing Dracula to life from both comic books to TV to screen, but there's never been a story about Dracula as scary as The Last Voyage of the Demeter. I believe that this is the first time I've ever seen Dracula portrayed in such a terrifying, unforgivably horrifying way. And that is something that I think has always been missing from the Dracula story. I love all the philosophical ideas that are wrestled with in the Dracula narrative. I love that he's been this erotic and dark and, you know, very cool character. But Dracula's definitely never been as horrifying as he will be in The Last Voyage of the Demeter. You know, Dracula is supposed to sustain himself for a month out there. So he brings on board, in one of the crates, he brings on board a, a woman of, uh, from a nearby village from where he, in, from his castle, that they sacrifice to him. And so that he can have the blood supply he needs for the journey. So eventually, they, the crew, find her and they take her out of his hands. So now he's lost, he doesn't have any blood supply. So he starts attacking the animals. He starts attacking, the, eventually, of course, the crew. So, and they don't know what's going on and she doesn't really know what's going on either. I think really what it is is you're sitting with these, these people and you're watching them go through this experience that they, can't, they have no choice but to go through. There's no way off this ship and that evil is lurking right there below the surface. And, yeah, it just, it, it really puts you in, a, in a, a state that we don't get to live in sometimes in these times, you know? It's like, we're all very comfortable and, 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 and the great part about the genre is that it, it pushes you outside your comfort zone. So the first time I really saw a monster was when he was in my face about to take a large lump out of my neck. And I said hello to him when he walked on board, but it's a lot different when the rain is going, the wind machines, all this noise, and uh, you're doing something. Even though it's in the script, you're doing something, you turn around, and he's there. And I really, genuinely, I really got a fright. <laughs> and I got a fright, not just in one take, like, but over and over. So if I'm getting a fright, and I know the guy who's in the suit, uh, hopefully that should transfer to scaring the bejesus out of uh, anybody watching the, watching the movie. But when people see it, I mean, you literally get chills down the back of your spine. Um, but then the magic is also funny. It's just also funny because I know it's Javier in there. Like, and he's so, the way he moves, the way he turns his neck, the detail, detail, detail in this movie is so key. So you've never seen Dracula look like he does in this film. He looks like something out of your worst nightmare, something that's crawled out of the pits of hell, something that is the conjuring of an evil mind, and that is what Dracula is. We all fear death. We all stare at our mortality, and it gives us all kinds of emotions, but what Dracula represents and the endless feasting upon human life to sustain his own immortality is just a horror that is almost inexplicable, and in this film, the first time that you catch a glimpse of Dracula, you're never going to forget it. It's something that is, I believe, going to live with audiences for a long time and haunt their nightmares. Uh, but when it comes to the visualization of him, I wanted him to feel like an older man. I wanted him to feel like he is fragile. And in that way, 
make him, in a way, also desperate and dangerous. I wanted this to be the scariest depiction of Dracula, ideally ever, in a movie. That, that's at least the goal we have set ourselves. Because a lot of Dracula movies are dramas. They're also, you know, a, a, it's an amazing broad story. They're trying to usually tell the whole story of Dracula from the book in some, some variation. So that gave us an opportunity to go into just a section of the character. But we needed to always keep a sense of humanity to him, so he doesn't just become an animal, if you will, or a monster. He's a very sophisticated character. But in this instance, he g comes down into this kind of feral state. And that's what we wanted to make the movie about. Listen, you'll have a great time sitting at home. You can scream at who you like. When you're at home, you can throw your popcorn up in the air and it'll land on your own couch. I'm telling you now, my first time I'm gonna see this, I wanna see it with an audience. I wanna see it, I wanna be in, I wanna be in the theater. You can look around over your shoulder if you like. There's a good chance I'll be down the back going like that when I'm hearing everybody screaming. Do this, go to the cinema, go and see this movie with hundreds of other people and be scared crapless with them. This is a dramatic telling of one of the most incredible chapters of one of the greatest books ever contributed to the horror pantheon and it tells a story of death coming in all of its horror for these people, just like it will come for all of us. And there's nothing it seems that they can do about it. And yet against all odds, they're going to try to figure out a way to defeat it. And death has never looked as terrifying. Death has never looked as intimidating. Death has never looked as dark as it does in the embodiment of Dracula that our incredible actor Javier and the amazing makeup team who put together his appearance have done to see him stalking towards both these poor characters and the audience themselves. Dracula is coming for you. So Dracula, he's like the perfect monster. There is no redemption with him. He wants to feed off you, and he wants to take your soul, turn you essentially into a zombie, a vampire zombie remove every piece of humanity from it. It's like the, the worst spiritual nightmare you can have, apart from just being ripped asunder, apart from the physical damage. He gets you in your soul, in your spirit. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's, just, he's the perfect monster. The perfect monster.